Hello everyone, welcome back. This is the cost benefit analysis chapter. We are now covering chapter 8. This is one of the most useful, interesting chapters in public economics. So without further ado, I'm going to get started. In the first part, we are going to have an introduction to cost benefit analysis. So here's a quick GPA, GPS. I always keep thinking about GPAs. No, GPS definition and introduction then we're going to learn about measuring the costs of public projects this is part two then measuring the benefits of public projects then we're going to put it together and we will talk about other issues about the cost benefit analysis let us get started cost benefit analysis is defined as the co comparison of costs and benefits of public goods projects to decide if they should be undertaken we learned about social marginal benefits, social marginal costs in the externalities chapter. We talked about that's the benefit to the society beyond the private marginal benefit. And social marginal costs, it also includes the cost to the society be beyond private marginal costs. So if you remember, these are very important in externalities, positive or negative, because social marginal cost is not private marginal cost when there is action side externality and social marginal benefit is not equal to private marginal benefit when there's a consumption side externality. So the question is, where do they come from, right? So this cost benefit analysis is beyond accounting exercise. It's a rich economic exercise that combines theory and empirical work that we learned so far. So let's talk about this very old project. I was actually in Seattle last summer for a conference and I've seen monorail. Okay, so monorail project in 20, 2002. When I see 2000, I want to say 2020 something. Okay, so let's get back. So monorail project in Seattle in 2002 when it was proposed, right? So the cost of uh, this project was construction cost, equipment, buying permission from landowner. So ruined views, for instance, I had a condo with views, let's say, and a monorail was covering it and the noise near the train. I live near the train and traffic delays during construction, of course. And the possible benefits of this project is reduced travel time for people, save parking fields, that fees, that's great. Reduced car maintenance, more reliable commuting times, fewer accidents, fatalities, views for monorail passengers while they're riding it, right? And also reduced noise from buses in the long run. So analysts found that the benefits would be about $2.07 billion, while the cost would be $1.68 billion. So with a narrow $390 million net benefit, help swing public opinion towards this project. So this was narrowly approved in 2002 and it lives. So California has a big transportation pro problem. The state's transportation problem is that the population is growing. Okay, The travel on California's highway system is increasing five times than its capacity increases. Population is expected to increase by 20 million over the next 34 years, the state has proposed the first high-speed rail system in the U.S., which is very exciting because people from Europe, we are so used to high-speed rail system and it's really convenient between countries. However, Europe and European countries are smaller. USA is huge. Anyway, so this would be covering 800 miles in the U.S. So water opted to pay for the projected 68 billion cost through bonds, federal funding, private investment, and revenue from carbon dioxide permits, okay? Analysts concluded the net benefits of rail system were over 133 billion. That's nice. All right, so cost-benefit analysis is used in these cases to approve projects such as this evaluating costs and benefits of public projects to decide whether we should approve it or not all right so this chapter covers cost benefit analysis again the comparison of costs and benefits of public good projects to decide if should they should be undertaken cost benefit analysis is widely used to evaluate potential public programs and projects so in corpus christi all the projects that are undertaken, they go through cost-benefit analysis. And I'll see you in part two, where we learn 
how to measure the cost of public projects. So let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. Put some questions in your mind for the next part. Should we count the labor working in the project as the cost of a project? Question number one. Should we count the asphalt cost to lay down that turnpike, highway? Should we put the maintenance over the life of the highway? Should we count the cost of the noise to people living around? So think about all these. Should we count them as the cost of a public project? And you will find the answers in the next part. I'll see you then.